publicly liable for whatever is possible. They'll see like a, a you know a movement about how you know black people are treated in America and be like, okay, like we we hear you. We're like for some reason we're going to do a, a land acknowledgement on the wild thornberries or something. So it's just something ridiculous and. With like you know legitimate grievances with like LGBT people, it's you know I like I don't know what the fuck is on Disney Kids or Disney Plus or whatever, but I'm sure like just by virtue of how shitty all content is and how uncreative everyone is now, and the sheer amount of content that can just not possibly fulfill the gaping maws of Americans, I'm sure it's like as clumsy and like stupid as anything else they've done that's tried to have some sort of social balance. Uh, but then the the next step of the dance will be like an insane conservative overreaction to it that, you know, ends in trying to end all public education in America and just branding random gay people as pedophiles and like getting them killed by psychos. And there's there's always going to be like an overreach after a while, but there will be some things enshrined in law that will take forever to undo but there will always be a backlash to it because like both sides always overreach. No one really knows when to stop. Uh, and we're just going to be locked into that until yes, yeah, something completely breaks. And, you know, I mean like the problem that they have is that like uh, the, the more society uh, like has d- 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 decided, like they, they feel out of their control that like gay people exist and are part of society. Well then like the free market system that we have means that necessarily they have to be catered to. You can't, like exclude people from that because like or just even if you wanted to why would you because that's a market that can be exploited like you can make money off of them and i i think like they're i don't think they're happy enough with just having their alternative siloed like you know uh daily caller or tucker for kids fucking uh like children's programming you know like i i think the idea that like someone somewhere uh still believes that it's okay to be gay and that like the 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 market, our government, our culture, our society is like more than or is fine with that. I think that's what drives them crazy. Well, I mean, there's that, but it's also like they need, you know, disparity. Like they, they, it's the same reason that like, y- you know, I'm sure some people on that side thought like, oh, we're, we'll have the free speech social media network. And, you know, you know, 70 million people or whatever they think like voted for Trump they'll all go on that or like, you know, 20% of them will go on that and it'll be like a rousing success. But they keep like crawling back to these platforms that they say are horrible and silence them like Twitter and Facebook and Instagram because like, A, that's where people are. But B, you know, they want to see their enemy watch them act bad. And they're never truly going to commit to the parallel culture model because like yeah no they want like they want the libs to see their conservative movie on disney plus they yeah. want like, yeah like they part of it is like yeah the the quest to upset people it's the same reason that like what you know like you see people who like they don't have to wear a mask um and they like go into a restaurant where like a server is like wearing a mask on their own volition and just like scream at them it's like well, like what the fuck you don't have to do anything yeah, and I, I mean it's also the same reason why like 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 left wing or like liberal alternatives to Twitter have also failed. It's because everyone mm-hmm. wants the everyone wants to piss off the other person, you know. Like everyone wants to be locked in this cage together. Because like, what's the point of doing posts if you're not going to rile someone up? Yeah, yeah. Continuing the Federalist, uh, she writes, uh, "The left's record on morphing natural sexual mores, however, didn't start yesterday." So we don't have to speculate about whether this might be some sort of unfortunate fluke that leaves an otherwise spotless enterprise with egg on its face. Have the conservatives resisting the use of the groomer label forgotten about the concerted effort by gender activists to host drag queen story hours for little children in taxpayer funded libraries or drag tastic camps at museums? Have they not seen the pornographic books introducing kids to gay sex and masturbation? How about the government's school teachers, government school teachers documented cult like allegiance to gay pride, the cover up of sexual assault resulting from trans bathroom policies or the coaxing of children into sex confusion and dangerous gender bending, gender bending interventions and then hiding it from their parents. Have they not heard stories of young people who internalized backward notions about human sexuality during their formative years, were utterly failed by every institution that should have helped them correct course, then went underwent destructive procedures that left them full of regret, just disfigured shells of the unique and beautiful people they were created to be? Uh, is she just talking about being Catholic? Is she ta- I mean, like, she's literally <laughs> just talking about being raised Catholic. 
Just be like, yeah, like it, uh, it takes your natural, healthy sexual development and warps it into this disgusting, horrible thing that leaves you a bitter husk of a person that's like deformed in some way for the rest of their adult life. Hmm, that sounds familiar. Oh, wait, and also um, covering up the abuse of child children on a massive scale. What, what is, that, that sounds familiar to me. This, this sounds just like being Catholic. Yeah, it just it's horrifying to think of like a f innocent 15 year old girl who is given all these backwards ideas about sexuality and, you know, starts making big decisions when she could be at the mall being cruised by Roy Moore. <laughs> and by the way, the Federalist was the one that wrote that that published that article about how what Roy Moore did was nothing was Roy Moore did nothing wrong. Even if one of the yeah of, one of the uh, one of the uh, arguments for Roy Moore was that this was common at the time for like a forty year old man to try to fuck a bunch of fourteen year old girls because like it was like well you know if you want a big family he wasn't yeah, trying to start gotta, a big family with them no no <laughs> yeah <laughs> Jesus like Jesus Christ like. I know that we have a very short memory in the culture just because of the content slop, the, the constantly open faucet. But Jesus fucking Christ, that was so short, such a short period of time ago. Yeah, but like, that's different because he's it's not like Roy Moy wanted those young girls to, you know, question their gender identity or anything. He just wanted to yeah. fuck them. Yeah, sexually assaulting them at a Cinnabon is one thing. But if he had, like, made them dye their hair a weird color. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, like, you protect children from abuse by marrying them. Yeah. No, that's, because, you know, that's like, literally, I mean, that's, that's, at, yes. That's, <laughs> it's like, you could say that's fucked up, but, like, to them, it is an internally consistent and correct worldview, you know? And we all live together in this country, and we, a lot of, we kind of seem to have thought that, like, well, we got all this stuff's got kind of got to, uh, it's going to iron itself out. And for a while, it really looked like it did. Like, oh, you know, th th this, this thing moves in one direction. And that was because uh, all of the real uh, stress points and tensions and frictions were smoothed out by some sort of uh, Im imagined future prosperity. Uh, and when you get rid of that, then all of those tenuous uh, truces uh, uh, fall apart. I just it's just awful when like a groomer teacher comes in between something that should be between a boy, the wrestling coach and the team's doctor. <laughs> uh, Ellie continues. How about tongue-in-cheek confessions from choruses of gay men that they'll convert your children? Or even manipulation by the presidents of the United States that those who don't abide by LGBT orthodoxy don't see and don't respect transgender people, and that so-called gender affirmation is the best way to keep kids safe and healthy. There's a word for adults who build trust with children, then condition them in sexual matters without their parents' consent or knowledge in order to manipulate them for their own pleasure. It's groomer. I, I thought she was going to say United States representative. <laughs> Well, the, I guess the the pleasure part is what I don't get. Like that that that's the the missing element. That's where the QAnon stuff comes in. Like the the ritual element, like the reptoid basement. You know, it kind of has to because otherwise, like w w how are they getting off on this? Like you you imagine that Brandon is like somehow having a sexual thrill at the prospect of kids transitioning. Chaser Biden. <laughs> I'm going to house a yes, man. <laughs> uh, uh, just continuing on here, uh, she, she writes about like you know what a, what 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 a groomer is, and she says uh, according to the website Child Help, which seeks to prevent child abuse, grooming includes gaining trust and access, playing a role in the child's life, isolating the child, and creating secrecy around the relationship. It goes on to say that signs of grooming include showing pornography to a child and talking about sexual topics that are not age appropriate. Joel Barry, the managing editor of the Babylon Bee, which has been censored for truthful statements about sex and gender, put it correctly when he said, most teachers themselves uh, aren't themselves pedophiles, but they are working in a pedophilic system designed to make kids more exploitable, both politically and sexually. He continued, they aren't grooming kids for, specific, for a specific pedophile necessarily. They're grooming them for a system of pedophilia, which will in the long run result in horrors we can't comprehend. Find your courage and stop it. System of I guess, pedophilia. We, I guess that's why the church is that. It's just individual acts of pedophilia, not structural pedophilia. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. Those are just weak. The guys who had, they just had a weak moment or something. Well, I mean, like, yeah, they, they let in all those priests that watch Disney movies when they were a kid. And like, that was the problem. <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot of dark stuff in Fantasia. I guess that um, is the difference between the two parties is the individualistic Republicans. They, they're all about their pedophilic grind on them by themselves. Like we're all, we're all competing pedophiles in the pedophile market. We're not. We're not on the same tide. Whereas the the 
uh, the collectivist Democrats are getting behead, be, together behind closed doors to create a pedophile context where they can all benefit. Well, she says system of pedophilia isn't conspiratorial. It's an apt way to describe a depraved culture that preys upon its children in the womb, in entertainment, in the classroom, online, during global pandemics, and anywhere else self-serving adults can exploit children to accomplish their political, social, and sexual ends. The ridiculous groomer tut-tutting is just the latest friendly fire from the dwindling faction of used-to-be conservatives who care more about getting published in the Atlantic than in defending the rights of parents and their vulnerable children. According to many of them, you're too sensitive about censorship, not concerned enough about decorum, secretly racist, not a faithful enough Christian, and now too sensitive to child exploitation. But we know what grooming looks like, and if we're afraid to call it what it is, what the hell are we conserving? So that's, uh, that's Kylie Zemple. So children should not be, they should not be groomed uh, for sex. They should be groomed for work in the Chipotle mines. <laughs> they should be kept uh, in sort of like uh, shapers so that they can hunch be, they can ergonomically hunch over the fixins bar. Yeah, there should be an Andrews game for fast food workers. <laughs> so, like, uh, I, I just wanted to, like, I, I just had to, I, I, I know I remembered Kylie Zemple's name, so I just like uh, clicked on the the hyperlink and I wanted to see uh, what are some re other recent Kylie Zemple articles, and I found one that makes a uh, like basically a perfect, uh, like I just like it, it just rhymes perfectly with the with the grooming article that she just did. And uh, this is from uh, January of this year. Uh, its title is, Girls, It's Okay to Be Beautiful. <laughs> and the article is basically how impressed by how hot she, by, she was impressed by how hot Billie Eilish was when she saw her without green hair. And she wrote a whole <laughs> article about that. So uh, she diary. writes, It was by sheer happenstance that I stumbled upon the month-old interview clip of Billie Eilish. I paused to watch not because I'm a super fan of her music, but because her fresh and natural appearance caught my eye and her attitudinal change kept my attention. She looked beautiful and her easy laugh and honest re reflections exuded confidence. Of course, I'd seen the once moody and neon haired star dressed in old Hollywood glam on the cover of Vogue and at the Met Gala. But this wasn't a single photo shoot or an occasion for a one-off fashion experimentation. 